Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Creative Katie, Karen Birchill. Today, I'm here to tell you it can be done. You can complete an art journal page in under 30 minutes. So I am working in a repurposed journal. I will link the video where I show how to do this. That's step number one use something that's not so precious so you don't have to worry about the end result use something that's also not overly big this one is 12 by 8 the perfect size not too big and not too small now i didn't gesso the page so that cuts preparation time i'm putting naples yellow and soon magenta quinacridone magenta and i'm mixing it right on the page with a makeup sponge I'm using some plastic cutting boards from the Dollar Tree to keep the mess from the other pages. Now, if I had gessoed this, it may have been a little easier to blend, but when I mix gesso in with the paint, it smooths it off, makes for blendability. So I can cut time that way. I'm just using a simple makeup sponge here and I'm putting the paint on wet on wet. I'm not overthinking it. Another way to limit your time is limit your color scheme. I'm basically using quinacridone magenta and Naples yellow. I'm going to add black and white and that's it. Simplify. Here you see me adding in the gesso and you'll hopefully be able to see that the makeup sponge is moving a lot faster on the page, on the raw page. So that's a little trick you can do. I like when I mix the colors, you end up with all the tones in between. A little more quinacridone magenta and it looks different. A little bit more yellow and it looks different. So we get corals and pinks and yellows and some areas that are lighter tones of those colors. The makeup sponge itself adds a lot of interest to the background. That's something you don't have to put in. And by skipping the gesso, I've also maybe eliminated some drying time. What's important is that you get in the studio and you create. We have to give up our idea of the perfect page. Of course, I want to create something that looks nice, but more than anything, I want to create. I want to play with color. I want to get creative. So here I'm just building up the colors adding a little more pink, a little more yellow. And you're going to see me also grab some gesso and I'm gonna knock back some of that text that's there. Although, quite honestly, it's just adding more interest to the background. And here I've got, I'm knocking back. Here's the white gesso, I'm knocking it back. I'm putting a coat of gesso on here. And then you're gonna see me come and put some color on there. I wanted to introduce a little more yellow here, a little more, and I love that cloudy effect that it's giving. So there we have the back background. Now simply, I am grabbing one stencil here. This is called the Magic Ladder from TCW. And I'm using that same color. I'm using the Quidacronal Magenta straight up and I'm gonna apply this to three basic places on the page. I'm not worried about making a perfect stencil. Again, this is the background. I just want interest in my background. Now, 
Now at this stage of the game, I did not have any idea of a focal image going on here. I was merely creating the background. And it's okay to just create a background in one session. I was able to finish this whole thing in under 30 minutes, but you could just do the background and save doing the focal image, the sentiment, and the finishing for another session. So break it up. Do what works for you, as long as it gets you in the studio. This is a piece of a sink liner. It's silicone, and I am putting on, <clears throat> I believe, white paint, but you could use gesso, either regular thickness gesso or thick gesso. I'm putting it on and using it as a stamp. And folks, this is one of my favorite Mark Makers stamps. It adds the nice detailing. Using white here adds contrast, which just brightens up the page. Now I'm struggling a little bit because I'm, I'm not putting enough paint. Normally I do this with gesso and it's a little thicker than my paint, but there we go. So I'm lining it up. And again, I am adding the marks to the background. I'm not trying to get a perfect stamp. I like the imperfection. And since I'm determined that I'm going to create, I'm not trying, I'm trying very hard not to overthink. And I'm moving fairly quickly. So some things that you can do is set a timer for yourself. And that might help you stop overthinking. So I'm just keep going and I'm just building it up. I'm looking at it, evaluating it as I go. But adding white is a great thing to make the page brighter. I wanted this to be colorful and bright. I did not want to go very dark. As I said, this is a sink liner that I'm using. I cut different size pieces. I've got one that fits my gel plate. I've got one that I use on pages as a stamp. I'm really loving how this turns out. I wanted to add a little bit of black, so I grabbed the Stamperia Songs of the Sea. I think this is called Two Textures. Great overall texture prints. I'm using archival ink for easy dry time. And I want this more subtle. If I wanted it darker and bolder and take more um, presence on the page, I would use the black acrylic paint. But I just wanted to add this little bit of detailing, the black in there. And the reason I'm adding black is because I did stop and decide what focal image I was going to put. And there's a little bit of black in there, so I want everything to coordinate. So again, I'm just putting it on, whatever you're putting on the top layer knocks back what's behind it. And then you see things in different places. So I'm thoroughly happy with my background at this time and ready to move on. So I explored some options here and I just wanna give you the options. I can use this daffodil. I like it because the shape of the daffodil, the white of the daffodil works well with the white stamping I did. The yellow also works in there. So that would work very well. Very predictable and kind of safe. This sunflower stamp, again, we've got similar tones. We've got that yellow in there. And the shape of the sunflower, again, goes, we've got the shape, the color, but florals are pretty easy. I'm gonna do the unexpected. I'm gonna use this rooster napkin from Ninny's Napkins. Now, I don't know if this one's available, but I know there are some there that have roosters that would work for this. Or you could get a free printable. I just wanted to do something less predictable than flowers. 
Now, I'm not a big chicken fan or rooster fan, so I opened it up. We've got roosters going in both directions. I just rough cut them. Secret here, leave the plies on to cut it out or rough cut it. Stabilizes the napkin, it's easier to cut it out. And now I get to play around with it. I'm gonna pretend that I could put a sentiment here, there, kind of setting up the composition. I kind of like this, we've got the roosters going here. I like how it goes with the black. Everything's working together. Now, because the background has the black and the rooster is white, I don't want that color to come through. So once I peel off the plies, I'm going to iron this on to my DIY decoupage sheets. And I'll link the video where I show how I create these sheets. Basically, they're Mod Podge that has been put on the sheet and dry. So now all I need to do is pull off the excess plies, heat up my mini iron, lay the parchment on top, and iron. Having those sheets done saves time and allows me to get my creating done in that 30 minute time span. So you spend time building your stash, the decoupage sheets. Now you can see I have all that around, but it didn't attach to the parchment. So even though I put the heat on, now what I need to do is just do some fussy cutting all the way around. And I'm going to do this, I'm gonna iron on all three roosters and fussy cut them but I'm not showing that in this video because, well, we all know how to fussy cut. But if you had a focal image like this and you ironed it on ahead of time, you could, again, build your stash. Sitting in front of the TV, you could be have it cut out and it would be ready to go. The key is create every day and enjoy the process. So now all of them are cut off and I went to Pinterest, did roosters, morning quotes, and I wrote up a bunch of them. I do a variety and different fonts to give myself options and then I make my final decisions. I figure I'm printing it off. I don't want to waste paper and whatever I have left over goes into the stash, which is going to save me time down the road. I could have used my wooden stamps, my letter stamps. I could have stenciled it in. I could have used, you know, if I possess calligraphy skills, I could do that. I like the big bold font of this and I'm just bubble cutting around it. And it just, I thought, ah, you snooze, you lose. You know, get up and enjoy your day. Create, set this as a priority. And now, once I have all the elements that I'm going to glue down, I get out my gel medium and I'm gluing down the roosters and the sentiment. Which means I only have to clean one brush. Now I'm folding the paper here because there is that center of the book. And just a reminder, the napkin, even though it is adhered with the iron-on decoupage sheet, when it gets wet, it still gets a little fragile. So be a little gentle. Make sure you don't rub too hard because you will maybe reactivate the, the, the Mod Podge and um, rip a hole in that. I did not. 
And there's a way around that. You can always paint over it. So I'm putting in some cereal, the plastic from the cereal line, cereal box, and I'm just edging the page. At this point, I'm not sure I want to do anything, any overpainting on the roosters. I just wanted to see what it would look like. Does it look finished with the black edging? the shading around the black. And I'm doing the black because it frames the page and it ties everything together. There's black stamping, there's the black set, the, yeah, the sentiment is in black, and there's black on the roosters. Now I could have left it <clears throat> just as it is and it would be well under the 30 minutes at this stage. But you know, I wanted the challenge of doing feathers with the overpainting process that I do. So I grab my angle brush and I start shading around the rooster and then that thinking that might be enough. And then I decided, no, I'm going to do some overpainting. Wanted a little bit more than this, but you have options. So I am using unbleached titanium, uh, burnt umber, and white gesso and to paint the feathers and brighten it and give a painterly effect on the roosters. And I go and mix the paints and I'm using a couple different sizes of liner brushes and smudging it with my fingers. And I like overpainting because now all three of my roosters aren't going to be identical. It looks a little more painterly. It looks a little more look like I painted it than I just glued down a napkin. Adding a little red to, to the roosters. And just using liner brush to make feathers and mixing the paint right on the brush. I get a little bit of brown, a little bit of unbleached titanium, a little bit of white, a little bit of black. It's far from perfect, but that's okay too. I'm developing my skills. Doing the overpainting also helps hide the straight edge when you cut it out. Because now I've extended the tail feathers and the feathers into and on the actual art journal page. Now I'm shading on the page around the roosters just to add a little bit more detail to it. This just makes it stand out against the background. While roosters aren't my first choice for art journaling, I think it's a fun page. And I grab my black fine liner bottle and I'm just going to put a sketchy line all the way around the border. Just another little detail. And I'm going to dot the eyes of the roosters as well. <clears throat> So it can be done. 
You can create an art journal page in under 30 minutes, keeping it simple, using a minimum of colors, having things in your stash. So this year, set yourself as a priority. Give yourself the gift of being creative on a regular basis. You'll be glad you did. Until next time, go get creative.